So the first thing you're going to want to do is pull off the uh, outlet tube for the uh, crankcase ventilation, um, which you saw in the previous picture. So take it off in one assembly and uh, set it off to the side. All right, here we go. We got it off to the side. You see, we got a connector right here. That's about it. Next thing you want to do is you want to fix your hands up in there and disconnect cylinders one through three uh, ignition coil connectors. And after you got your uh, ignition coil connectors disconnected, you're going to want to take off this nut right here. Right there for the uh, turbo uh, wastegate control. And uh, I'll show you the reason why we're doing that here in a second. So that tube comes around, heads right in here to the bottom of the wastegate. So you're just going to disconnect it right here. And that nut that I just pointed at on the top, and that's it. And then you should be able to fish it out. I find this little Mac pocket pry bar. I'm sure everybody's seen the part number for this already, but it's like PN2B. Just to be the quickest thing to get this little nut off. Because it's only like a quarter inch or a six millimeter or something like that. Instead of getting out the tools, just pull this out of your pocket. It's a lot quicker. So on this particular chassis, um, you can't bring the uh, tube up because it hits that bracket. Let's see if you can see it. It hits that bracket right there. On most other engines or platforms, chassis, whatever, that bracket is not there and you can just swing it up off that stud and move it out of your way. But in this particular case, we got to do this. We'll just disconnect it from the fuel housing and just kind of move it up out of the way. I'll show you the reasoning for that here in a moment. All right, so with these, and the reason why is because you want to pull the first three cylinder uh, coil packs off with the whole bracket. And uh, if you see in here, through that little hole, there's, I uh, can't really see it. Right there is a little 10 millimeter nut. And I like to use the uh, snap-on quarter inch magnetic deep socket there. The reason why I use the magnetic is because I don't want to drop it back there. That would suck. So I just pull it off like that. Safe. The other one is a little further back, but basically the same thing except you have a stud and on the stud you have a uh, p-clamp with a uh, wire loom running through it other than that same thing you're just going to want to use your magnetic drive and uh, pull it out all right so i got the p-clamp off something different on these l9 engines is uh there's also a ground um, eyelet. You see there, my fingers in the distance, the ground eyelet. I'm not sure what that's for, but this is a new engine, so I'll figure it out eventually. But uh, you're going to not want to forget to put that back on. It's important. Alright, so after you pry, you should be able to pop the whole rack of coils off for cylinders one through three. And on these new L9s, 
it's damn near impossible to get it out from the front as a whole. So I come here through the back and I pull it out just like so. Organization is key. Now that you've got three cylinders, I haven't pulled the plugs yet, but when you do, you have three open cylinders and you got a lot of little small nuts. So small nuts, little nuts. Um, so you don't want to uh, drop anything. That would be pretty catastrophic. So organization, keep your tools together, keep your nuts and bolts together, keep your parts nice and organized. And uh, that's pretty much the only way to do it. Another little tech tip I have for you guys, uh, before you actually remove the plugs, take your uh, blow gun and blow out all the debris that accumulates in there so it doesn't fall into the cylinder when you do remove the plugs. Alright, so it's critical that you keep your spark plugs clean. Um, basically, don't touch the porcelain part with your greasy fingers. Uh, they do come pretty well packed. The um, thing I like to use is a snap-on magnetic spark plug socket. And this is just your standard 5 8 um, This one's got nice knurling on it. And... Uh, I also like to pair it with Snap-on's uh, wobble uh, locking extensions. Um, pretty much when they're locked in there, it won't fall out on you into the into the bore, and it gives you a little bit of wiggle room and play. So that's my choice on this. See, I got it in there. It's just kind of flopping there, ready for my ratchet, and uh, we'll. Start pulling plugs one through three. The torque isn't much on the plug, so once you break it loose with your uh, ratchet, um, just use the knurling on the extension and uh, twist it out. Lefty Lucy. Do these one at a time. That way you have less chance of something falling in the open bores. So pull one bad plug out, or old plug I should say, and uh, Put new one in and then move on to the next cylinder the torque spec on these plugs cummins l9 engine is 28 foot pounds and uh use a quality torque wrench and uh fishing it in there is kind of hard so have patience all right now we got uh one through three uh plugs in and torqued uh, next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to inspect your uh, coil extensions and coil packs. Check your, your pins there. Make sure everything's clean. Uh, you're going to want to clean it anyways with some electrical cleaner. Clean off the extensions. Um, another note too, keep each plug that you pulled out with its according cylinder. Um, you're going to expect a plug condition. Um, this is a brand new engine. This is the first uh, 20,000, I think, of, of plugs on this thing. So um, everything looks looks fine, but further down the road, once you get more mileage on them, it gets pretty crazy, and you're gonna wanna, you know, inspect your electrodes and all that. Um, but yeah, clean it up, clean up your extensions. Um, the Cummins spark plug kit comes with new boots. These boots are pre-lubricated, so no need to add any dielectric grease to them. They're already lubed from the factory. So just remove them from here, pop the new ones on, and then uh, we'll proceed to the next uh, step. A uh, common problem with these coil extensions is they become loose over time. So you just wanna grab them and make sure they're nice and snug before you reinstall them. All right, so now we got all these on, all the boots. We checked it out. Then it's good to go to put the bracket back in. It's different than removing. Take off cylinder one.
and uh, kind of keep one of these just finger tight a couple of threads not completely but enough to where it's not going to fall out and enough to give you some wiggle room let's go put it in all right so i ended up having to uh, take off both of those little uh, eight millimeter head bolts for the coil pack because in order to get cylinder one coil pack in because of this alternator that sits on top um, which you only run across in buses um, you have to remove that and kind of play with it wiggle it in its bracket in order for it to get to pop in place and then line up the holes and reinstall the little bolts probably where I should get an eight millimeter magnetic because getting these in here if you drop them it's a pain in the ass to fish them out most important part of this whole entire video coffee nice warm black coffee all right since we are working on a bus we are in the inside uh, rear to get to four five and six uh, pretty much the same procedure um, we're going to remove the whole bracket uh, four four five and six as a whole and uh, when reinstalling this one you do not need to remove uh, number four in order for it to fit it's just pull out and push back in the whole bracket assembly um, rather than drag this thing on um, like i said everything is just in reverse now to put everything back together and uh, you're done you do however need to disconnect this sensor right here and uh, move this wire out of the way in order to pull the bracket off. Other than that, you're good to go. Make sure you have good lighting. I use my Streamlight Streon Switchblade. Uh, magnetic base comes in handy. Really love the thing. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Really support the channel. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Get yourself a long hook like this. I use a snap on one, but uh, most brands will do as long as they're pretty st sturdy, strong. But uh, you just kind of uh, hook it in there uh, and pull. Uh, press in. Hook, pull, really hard, uh, oh, just like that, and this one came out from the chunk, no big deal because the spark plug's still there, but that's how it comes out, and you'll come across this quite a bit, so keep that in mind.